Welcome to the K2 Sales Podcast. I'm your host, Karen Kelly. Every week, I'll be sitting down with a sales executive where they'll share their stories and experiences that produce game-changing results. Let's be honest, sales can be a tough game. I'm sure at some point, we've all delivered a less than stellar demo, been ghosted by a client or two, and sometimes, maybe we did more talking than listening. And that's where I can help. The stories and insights our guests share can be applied to your own business, your territory, or with your team, so you're not reinventing the wheel. Our weekly tactics and strategies help you get out of your head and start creating your own path towards game-changing results. Welcome back to the K2 Sales Podcast. I'm your host, Karen Kelly. For those who are new, welcome. And for those who are returning, welcome back. I've had the pleasure of speaking with many inspirational guests over the past months. I'm coming on today to do a solo episode, which I do from time to time, and really just share what I'm seeing in my business and uh, just in the sales world in general. And I want to talk to you today. This is going to be a short one, but I want to talk to you about delivering your your value prop, um, whether you're a, a founder, a small business owner, or, you know, a sales professional working for corporate. And the reason is that I just, I hear it, <laughs> I hear it go wrong quite often. And it's so important because it's the first, usually it's the first thing that people learn about you and people form a first impression in seven seconds. And so if you think about your value prop should be around 30 seconds, you know, that's almost, um, that's almost a third of the time that they've already formed an impression. So if you're leading with features and benefits or you're stammering or you go way too long, you know, you've lost them immediately. And so um, as I was thinking about what I'm going to talk to you about, three C's came to mind for me is what we should be thinking about or what we should be embodying in preparation for our value prop. And I say preparation because, yeah, you should you should. Uh, you should have a framework for what you're going to say. And some examples might differ based on the perso- person you're speaking with because the industry uh, might be different. But for the most part, what you're going to say is going to be um, is going to be the same. But you want to you want to have it practice, not rehearsed, but you want to understand some of the talking points that you're going to be delivering. And so the three C's are clarity, curiosity and conviction. And so when I say clarity, this is you know, first of all, clarity in yourself, like, especially if you're a business owner, you know, what they're going to be thinking the entire time is why did you start this business? You know, if it's a service based, if it's a niche based business, there's a story behind it. So have clarity in yourself, have a real strong understanding of why you started the business. You should have that on your website or your about us page that really conveys the emotion, the story behind it so that others can see themselves in that story because that's very relatable. And most founders don't want to put themselves out there and they're afraid, you know, to make themselves visible. But what you're doing is, you know, by you hiding, you're preventing others to see you. And when they see themselves in you, that helps them come to that awareness or acknowledgement phase that then they can move towards, you know, doing something about the problem. And that's where you can help them. But you know, when we, when we hide from that, from sharing our story and telling our why, we're, we're not helping them. And so one thing I would say is it's not about us. You know, we've we've launched the business. We need to now put ourselves in the shoes of our buyers and think, how can we help them move to that unaware or denial? And part of that is through sharing our story. So really getting clear on yourself, on why you started the business, um, even if you are in corporate, why you chose this company, why this industry? You know, I worked in healthcare for 20 years and it's because it was meaningful for me. I wanted to be a doctor my whole life and I chose a different path, but being in healthcare, being in the hospital setting, being in service of patients, that was important to me. And so I made sure that that came out when I was sharing why I chose the industry I did. So really have clarity of yourself. Also have clarity of outcome. So after you share what you do, what do you want them to do? Do you want them to um, ask you questions? If this is an if this is part of your social um, outreach, you know, do you have a call to action? So if it's not maybe your value prop, but if you're sharing a message, what do you want them to do after? So really think of have that end in mind. Do you want them to ask questions? Do you want them to look for more information? What type of information in that? So you can kind of build that in a little bit to prompt them or cue or tee it up for what that next step is um, and really help them. Yeah, know 
know where, where we're going after this. So if you're sharing your value prep, if you have a, a message about what you do or your, your, your company, what do you want them to do after they read the message or after you share it? And so have that in mind so that it's organic. You know, that next step is almost um, baked into it. And so the first one is clarity. And I would also say when you're delivering your message, so often I hear these pitches because I'm, I'm a lot of, I'm involved in pitch competition, sometimes as a judge, sometimes as a sales coach to prepare them. But even after they share their value prop or their pitch, I still don't know what they do. And so we have to be clear because oftentimes our prospects have never bought our service or maybe never bought from us. And so they need to understand with complete clarity what it is you do and what problems you solve and for who and how. So put yourself, you know, in your buyer's shoes, use language that they would understand, really paint that picture uh, using visuals, you know, just storytelling a little bit. Say like, you, you know, when you, you know, work in a, for me, I could say, you know, you know, for these sales reps who really are, you know, type A go-getters, really want to take their, their career to the next level. But, you know, unfortunately, they're not getting the support that they need, or they're not getting the coaching they need. And so you paint that picture and you almost make the the problem, so for me, that, that would have been lack of coaching or lack of development, you know, that's the enemy. And get them to see themselves or align with that enemy, whatever you're trying to paint a picture of. Yeah, well, you know what? We actually work with companies who have teams like that, and we provide a structure and a framework to support them so that they can get the skill set. They can get um, the support they need ultimately to, to drive the results for them and also for their company. Okay, but I, I did a little bit of storytelling there, but I have to be clear on who I, what problem I solve for who in what industry. And uh, part of clarity is also brevity. So less is more, you know, and when you're practicing this, can you, can you tone down the language so it's very layman terms? And can you tighten the words so you're not, you know, using 12 words to say something you could say in six? So first one is clarity. Second point is curiosity. And so the whole point, if we go back to a value prop, and if you're delivering this in person, is that's just a a sound bite of what it is you do, okay? We're not going to give them everything because we want to create a bit of intrigue, of curiosity. We want them, after we share it, to have questions, to be, their curiosity should have been piqued and say, huh, I need to know a little bit more. So they understand the problem you solve. They understand for who a little bit of the how now, maybe. So how do you do this? How does this work? And if you've delivered it correctly, that's, you should, you should pique their curiosity because we don't want to give them all. We want them coming back. And sometimes, you know, it's after it's another call. And again, we've, you know, then they're thinking about it more often, but we definitely want to pique their curiosity. So think about, you know, what you would deliver in the first instance, a first exchange, and then what information would you hold back that's almost secondary, but you know is important to them. So again, we want to pique their curiosity. And the reason is, if we give them everything at once, there's no, there's no need for a future call or for, you know, further dialogue. But also we want to sound and look different from everyone else. And this is where, you know, think about if you are uh, sharing information or content, like we want to pique their curiosity so that they stop scrolling. We've caught their attention. So is it an attention grabber? Is it language? Is it some polarizing statement we've said? And a polarizing statement is really going to get someone's attention because the goal is it's going to say something that's provocative, but it aligns to 80% of your audience and the other 20% who think, oh, this girl, this is totally BS. I don't agree with what she's saying. That's what I want. I'm not going to be everything to everybody, but those 20% who don't agree or don't like what I'm having to, what I'm sharing, they're going to disqualify themselves. And so I know now these are my people. This is my tribe. And so part of that is creating curiosity um, and just by being different so that we're not looking and sounding like everyone else. So think about ways in person, if you're delivering your value prop in um, conferences, in one-on-ones, in the virtual setting, if you're sharing it through content, a little bit about what your business does, how can you share some information, not everything that's going to promote some curiosity, some dialogue, some future follow-up. And, um, and we want to be intentional with that. So we know when we say this, they're going to, they're going to want to know more here. And so this is where we can test it out and say, what language are we going to use? 
Uh, where are we going to place certain words that's going to invite them to want to come back because they're curious? And the third one is conviction. And this is so important because when you think about the way in which people buy and the part of the brain, that reptilian brain that's responsible for um, emotion, has no concept of language, and it's also responsible where 90% of decisions are made, is that we have to come across full of conviction, full of confidence, full of just this knowing that we can help them. And it's got to be emotion driven because, again, we want to activate that reptilian brain. And where this comes from is you have the knowledge, you have the data, you have the backing that you have helped people like these folks that you're targeting. So it's not like, uh, I think we should be able to, we've helped people like you in this industry, in this stage, with this problem, whatever it is, you know, and paint that before picture again, but with certainty, you've helped them. Because when you think about the underlying emotion, why prospects, 56% of deals are ending in indecision right now, it's fear. People are afraid to pull the trigger because there's a lot riding on it. Budgets are tighter. Their name's on the sign. Nobody wants egg on their face. And so how can we de-risk it for them? And a lot of it is, you know, sharing information so that you're telling them with, with certainty, we've helped people like this in the past. This was the, this was the challenges they came to us. So rest assured, you're not alone. Okay. Again, letting them feel that, um, that they're like other people, others like them are struggling, but it working with you and a little bit of the how here, but this is how you were able to transform their sales team, transform their, whatever you're working on to help them achieve these types of results. And these are some of the, 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 the stats that we're able to share. So this was their current state. This was their, you know, future state. And this is the Delta is where we worked with them. But look at where that, you know, they have a 30% recent retention, whatever those numbers are, you know, back up that emotion with numbers. So when you have that sense of conviction that you've helped others, it transfers to them. So all of a sudden you see their grip loosen a little, loosen a little bit because they think, oh my God, these guys have done this before. This is not their first rodeo. No, it's not. But also conviction in yourself. You yourself started this business. You yourself are chosen to work in this industry for this company. You know, what level of conviction and belief do you have in yourself? 53% of the reason people buy is the person. So if you lack that level of self-belief, how can you expect them to have it in you? So you have to have a level of conviction, not arrogance, but just as real unwavering belief mixed in and sprinkled with storytelling and and emotion and pictures of how you've helped others, but that they get the feeling without even you having to say, we got you here. Like they feel that. I mean, you can still say, you know, we've helped others like you and I would encourage you to say it, but they should have this feeling that I'm in good hands here, you know, and that's the goal. And when you, when you do that, you compress the sales cycle because there's trust built, there's this understanding and they're like, yeah, but you know what? I, I really feel that they've got, they understand us. They've got our best interests at stake here and they, they can help us achieve these results. So in quick summary, I would say when you are sharing your value prop in person in a virtual setting, if you are sharing some information through content creation online, the three C's of areas what we can really adopt to help us stand out, help us allow our audience to know what problems we solve for them. And that's a big thing. What problems we solve because there's a, it, everyone's pitching benefits and features. People don't know. 97% of people are in unawareness. They don't know that they have a problem. So the first thing is how can you paint a picture for them to acknowledge and go, huh, I think that's us. Or you know what? That could be us if we don't do something about it. And so in order for us to do that, we have to sell the problem. And three ways we can do that with our value prop is the first one is clarity. Be clear. Know who you are. What is the outcome after you deliver it? What do you want them to do? What are those next steps? So really um, choreograph that. Make sure that you know where you want them to go, what you want them to do. The next one is curiosity. So we not, don't, don't give them everything, right? If you're talking for 30 or 40 seconds, leave some stuff out. More of the how to because that part is your unique area of how you can solve them. Uh, solve their problem. But most people is the why, you know, why should we change? Why now? And why you? So the how can, can wait a little bit. They need to first know that they have a problem and that, you know, that, that worth solving and that you're the one that they'd like to journey along this path with. 
Um, and the third one is conviction. You know, again, if we're looking for them to buy, to move forward with us, we have to have a sense of conviction. We have to have self-belief and confidence in ourselves that we can take them across the line. Even if it's the first time we've done this, if you're a brand new sales rep or you're a brand new business owner and you say, Karen, well, I haven't actually helped people like them. Okay. Have you helped people in life? Have you solved problems on a parent committee? Have you been part of um, a sports team where you had to come together and overcome a challenge? So in life, you were able to solve a problem. Okay, so I would just say, look at those transferable skills. Look at what you had to bring to the table. Was it, you know, a level of understanding, awareness, empathy for others, uh, clarity and communication? Like all these things are part of what you're going to bring to the table. So until you get that first deal across the line, look inward and say, well, how have I helped in general in life? And allow that to start elevating your sense of confidence, belief, because again, Sales is a transfer of enthusiasm. And if you can't transfer the level of belief and conviction that you can help them, they're moving on to the next person because uh, no one is going to put their name on the line for a marginal growth that's got to be significant. And for someone who's who's wavering in whether or not they can solve their problems. Okay, so uh, put those into practice uh, next time you're sharing your value proposition and uh, let us know how it goes. Let us know what success uh, and, and also what success you yield, but also how you feel, you know, because it shouldn't be conversational. It shouldn't be this robotic, scripted, pitchy, you know, nervousness. They're buying you. They're buying from a person, not a bot. If they want to go to AI, they can buy from a bot. But this is where we have to inject humanity back into it. And this is where we have to have a conversational, playful, yet confident tone about us that's... Um, you know, just storytelling, and it puts them at ease that when they leave, they're thinking, oh, it was different. And they and they remember you, but it was different. And it wasn't so buttoned up and tight. And so um, try that on. Let us know how it goes. Thanks for listening, everybody. And we'll see you next time.